Hi and welcome to this episode where I will not style Daisy, she is styled so beautiful herself. But today we will style a Japanese black pine. Japanese black pines are two floss pines that differ from the single floss pines, Scots pines and Pinus mogo, and the Japanese white pine that only have one floss a year. Japanese red pines and black pines can have two floss per year, but only if the new candles are removed during summer. This is a kind of protection from the trees, from nature. They are living at the coastal side, up along the coastal, windy coastal side of Japan, and there some typhoons and hefty storms sometimes rip off the new growth during late spring, early summer. And exactly that have forced the tree to find a survival mechanism because if the new growth was not replaced by new, some second growth, if this happens repeatedly in just two or three seasons, then the tree will not be able to survive. Therefore, it had developed that survival mechanism where it can set a second flush of growth, replacing the first soft growth that was ripped off by a storm. The second growth is weaker. It is smaller, it's more compact, and exactly that knowledge we can use when we train our bonsai. So deliberately, we can remove that flush of growth during late spring, early summer, when the first candles, the first new growth have developed. Then we can remove all of that new growth, weak and strong, and get a second shorter flush of growth. This is not something I would recommend doing every season, because, and especially in a training period where the tree needs to strengthen up. It's advisable not to do it every season, but wait until you have fattened up branches, developed enough strong growth so the tree is healthy growing. Then this refinement method can be used to make an increasing ramification. If we want back budding, with pines in general, both one flush and two flush pines, let the new growth extend, mature, and let it stay. Although you get longer branches, if you then remove the inner needles, you will get air and sunlight inside there, producing new buds further back. This will not happen when we rip off the new candles, because there they will just begin to reproduce themselves and increase the growth at the ends where the first flush was removed. Therefore, it's only a technique for refinement and not in the development stage. Therefore, this tree have longer growth at the tips because it was led to grow to strengthen up and mature and set new growth further back. What I will do today is I will remove some of the needles at the inside here while the branch is in position and then we can begin to look at how the tree will look in future. But first of all, let's examine the possibilities and let Daisy wander off to a comfortable chair nearby the fireplace so I can work in peace. Okay, Daisy. Yep. Here. This Japanese black pine is specially trained to be a shohan bonsai. What is looking like a trunk is actually roots curled around buried in the soil in the beginning and then slowly exposed for the air and for the sun and then they thicken up with time. It has been grown in a bigger pot first and then put into a, later, a smaller pot later on to adapt to the small environment we want for Shohan bonsai. But as you can see, all the roots are curling around here. They have been wired and pressed together and then grown from a very young cutting, maybe 10 to 15 years ago. There is a pretty thick piece up here, which actually is the base of the original trunk. This is where the roots emerge in the start, and then they have been twisted and curled around underneath the soil and they are exposed. That thickness up here and the thickness of the roots have been held on the way by using a free growing branch to thicken everything up and the evidence is always there somewhere in a tree so let's try and find what have happened earlier because some branch will have been there to make all of this fattening up like this fat piece up here also curled around. 
And here you can see the scar. It has was cut off a little earlier this season, covered with some cutting paste. I can remove that now. It doesn't do any good anymore. Uh, the tree is stored inside and it will not be attacked by fungus or anything. So we can expose it and see where that piece was cut off. And it is deliberately, hopefully, placed at the back side of the tree. But let's see where we will end up having the front. So here a long thick branch has been growing to help all of this fatten up. The interesting part of the tree, and this is the first thing we have to examine every time we begin to style a bonsai, is to try to find the soul of the tree, what is most interesting. It's not necessarily what is most pretty. It can be what is a little distracting, that is special, that is uh, looking different from a lot of other trees. Here we have those curled roots, which I think are interesting. We have that top part of the trunk that is curled around and coming up here again. We have a dropping branch over here we can make use of. It is possible, now we're just going through different scenarios, it is possible to remove it, then just have a crown up here. But I think it's a nice feature with that dropping branch. And then we can pull other branches down. The most interesting part here is that curling. If we look here, it will be a little flat. It will have a little bit of inverse tapering being wide here, more narrow and wide again. If we look over here where we have that sacrifice branch, it's not a really bad position, but still we have that sacrifice branch, that big sky in here, and the curling of the trunk up here is not that convincing. So the choice will be having the front from this side. The first thing to do is to clean up the tree, remove some of the older needles, and older needles are simply needles that are more than two years old. The cyclus of most pines is that they cling to the needles tree season and then they begin to drop, being replaced by new growths further out. So there is an exchange of foliage on coniferous tree as there is on the city tree. On the city trees, it is just yearly. On coniferous, it is every year that some of the three-year-old foliage begins to decay and drop off. Typically during summer it starts and then with some winds it will just drop off and be replaced by new growth. If we do not do anything, all of this will just expand and expand and it's important to get light inside to develop new growth at the inside so we can keep that compact, clean, small image. So first of all, I will cut off some of those old needles or pluck them off depending on if it's possible to get my fingers in between here. When that is cleaned, we can begin to look at styling possibilities depending on what shows up. Because when we look at a tree at this stage, it's pretty impossible to know if there are smaller and younger branches at the inside that we can make use of. So first of all, let's clean up. There are, of course, some of these dead needles in between that is important to get rid of because any old growth that it has with it will attract fungus and make hiding places available for bugs and insects. The Japanese black pine is pretty tolerant to freezing. What it doesn't like is when it gets too wet. So the wet winters we have around now, a days when winters aren't like they were in my childhood, where there was a guarantee of snow. Now we have to live with wet and pretty boring winters, although we had a little bit of freezing for the last days. What's important to remove is the old needles and select the new candles here appearing this year. They have a little softer growth, shorter growth, but the long needles, we can remove everything that is sticking out here and then leave approximately the same number of needles at every little branch that we want to keep. 
and we have to be almost mathematically correct so they are even so the energy is evenly distributed throughout the tree because the Japanese black pines have a habit of letting strong growths take over from weaker parts and uh, compared to deciduous trees and other types of trees strong parts are determined by the number of, of needles and not so much about uh, the visual strength of each candle. So I'm cleaning up to the bottom and then if there are too many candles in one place I will select the ones to stay but here we have a number of two and two and one here so that will be a fine uh, measurement and here in this case I have a little weaker piece down here but it will have the same number of needles as the stronger one at the top although these are shorter and these are longer I keep approximately the same number of needles if it is a really weak pot I just leave it alone and so I will keep on cleaning up needles and it sits very tight which is uh, pretty good because then we have a lot to work with it's a, an excellent pre bonsai it, it wasn't that expensive for some reason this type of bonsai with curled roots and trunks are not in fashion at the time being and I have no idea why I think they are beautiful but with bonsai and everything else things are in fashion from time to time and every time I pull needles off I do it in the same direction as they are growing up here we will end having a candle or piece of growth with pretty long needles and I have to accept that although they will sit beside smaller candles with shorter needles if I want to keep that one I just have to live with it and wait for the next season or two to grow new candles with shorter needles and the reason this have very long needles is simply because it had better conditions and no competition around it so it was able to grow stronger where there are more candles and more growth at the same branch they often will get shorter needles if you find it too difficult to use your fingers if there's no room then use a pair of tweezers to pluck off needles or alternatively cut the needles off with scissors when cutting off do it as close to the base of where the needles are fastened so there's not sitting a lot of growth back that will dry out and risk to attract fungus I prepare using my fingers whenever I can it's a little faster and as good as with tweezers where there are really long needles I remove them in favor of the shorter needles sitting at the base it is a little bit tedious job to do but really important to clean up and prepare the tree before thinking about wiring it also checking any diseases in this process box hiding and things like that is a good idea when we work this way this operation can be done almost any time of the year but it is convenient to do it here in winter time where there's not so much else to do when we are busy in summer with watering and decandling and pruning other type of trees 
So it's about planning the season and keep yourself occupied during winter time with jobs that can be good to do at this time. And the, another advantage is when you're doing it at this time is that the tree will not bleed. Avoid this in the midsummer when the sap flow is really high because the tree might lose some resin and it will set it a little back. And this operation helps light get inside here. I take one needle at the time, uh, but you can take two as well. Try to support the branches in here whenever you can, so you not by accident rip off a full developed candle and miss the opportunity to have that available. Another purpose besides having that light reach the inside to create new growth is also to do this at this stage to be able to put in wire without crossing needles being able to work with the tree. Every time we do stuff like this, wiring, removing needles, we also weaken the tree a bit. So we have to take that in caution when we begin to plan the next season for this tree. We simply need to leave it alone after such an operation. Let it rest to regain strength because when branches are wired, they simply weak because we twist them. We add a new direction to the branches, so they have to, they have to find new waterways we break some of the cells at the tissue inside. They need to use energy to build that up again. We also remove some of the foliage, which means they have less foliage, less needles to produce energy from photosynthesis when the sun is shining, when there's light enough. So add a good fertilizer from the start of the season to the end of the season and give the black pine as much light as it can get because they thrive with that. And Use a really coarse soil mixture because what black pines absolutely hate is having their feet wet. They are prone to root rot. So take very much care of that. And if you see fungus and attacks or you see the uh, tips of the needles getting brown or yellow and pale, that often is related to the roots and not what is happening above ground. What is happening above ground, above soil level, is almost always a sign of something bad happening at the base of the tree beneath the soil level. It is almost always due to some problems with the roots. But sometimes you will see a needle that shows a brown tip and that is not necessarily a sign of uh, any fungus or any insect attacks. It could be so, but it can just be a mechanical uh, damage done by a pair of scissors when pruning the tree earlier or when someone have moved the tree and just knocked on the needle, then it might break the tip here and make the tip dry out, but it will not be a catastrophe. If it is just one or two needles, it is often because some mechanical damage has been done. The great thing with Japanese black pines is that they can have this really compact growth where the Japanese red pine is softer and more lush in its growth. It cannot be refined as precise and controlled as the Japanese black pine. The Japanese black pine is also a favorite among the Japanese because it has a really big cultural meaning and uh, religious meaning to their culture where they believe that Japanese black pines, or at least that's the story, where the foliage pads are formed in steps, that will be the stairway to heaven. A beautiful story, actually. And therefore, you'll see a lot of black pines formed like that. And you will also see them 
typically at the winter display because it has a strong t tradition in Japan. But you do not see so many with this style. You often see them at that as that very formal style. Shiohen bonsai especially. And slowly we work our way through cleaning up some small dead twigs or very weak growth also is something I remove. But what we should end up ideally is pieces of growth like this one, where it will be easy to wire and put these two in position. But also try to keep as much growth as possible. We will have more branches occurring at the same place, more than two, then I remove one of them so that we have two pieces of growth. And here I select the ones that grows outwards and not the one that grows inwards. Or when I bend that branch, it will grow upwards. So that one is removed. So we only have two. If we have more growing at the same spot, more than two, we will end up building a knuckle and that will swell up with time and look ugly. And some of the really old needles feels very stiff. They are darker, they are thicker, and sometimes more resistant when I try to pluck them. Then there are the one-year-old needles from last season. They are a little easier to remove. And then we have the lighter and softer growth from this season. So three seasons of growth usually is present on a pine tree. Up here you will notice maybe we have a bigger distance between the needles and this is because this growth have developed during a period where it was first of all fed well, got enough water and therefore also elongated maybe a bit too much. But so it is and the same will be visible at places with very long needles that's also caused by growth happening at a season where this could take off, get much fertilizer and much water. The more compact growth that we find in here is developed at a time where the growth have been weaker, maybe less sunlight and maybe more competition between the bottles of growth. So. There are different factors influencing on how well this develop. Later in the season we can begin to, or in the development, we can begin to control and keep that growth compact by having much more foliage in competition, hold the fertilizer back and especially also the water back and adding sufficient light. So those factors will influence on the density and the strength of the growth. I removed just here some of the new long growth, so I keep some shorter compact growth here to keep it all tighter. Whereas there are not, are not enough of that type of growth, I'll leave it long, although it looks a little fluffy. It's beginning to be a little bit complicated at the inside here. There's really not much room. Well, Johan Bansai is fun, but sometimes also uh, pretty challenging because there isn't room to work. But the reward at the end will be a beautiful compact tree. And the great thing 
obvious that there is so much to work with here. So I think we, within this dining, will be able to make something that will already look like something that we can, where we can see what the result will be at the end. At other times, it can be almost disappointing to style something where a lot of branches and foliage is removed and we are left with not so much material to make that progression and impact of a future tree. But that's the thing with bonsai. With some trees, we can do something that looks a little like a bonsai in the early stages and with other trees it just takes small steps each season to accomplish something. The top seems clean enough to leave it for now. There will always be something overlooked. And then we can move down to that bottom part here. And uh, with all trees that have branches placed lower, uh, considerably lower than the top, this part will be weaker than the top part up here. All trees are apical dominant with a few exceptions like the chochobai, the Japanese quince, where it is important to cut and prune the lower part more than the top, but most trees will be stronger at the top and therefore take more care how much foliage or needles are removed at the bottom part so it's able to drag water all the way up and around here and down here because water flow when the tree is evaporating moisture will flow towards the top that's the nature and if it wasn't because it was trained in a bonsai style it would just grow upwards and make this branch weaken and die off eventually because it's more important for the tree to have to grow upwards so it can conquer out other growths around it and reach the light Soon there will be clean branches to work with and needle bunches to place. The Japanese black pine is pretty hungry, so use a high nitrogen heavy fertilizer in the growing period. Then when it is developed and has strengthened up, then use a more balanced fertilizer to even out the growth and stop it from elongating and grow too long candles and long fluffy needles. So it's possible to make a compact image. And it's always about the end image when we're working, but the steps towards that end image can be long and tedious. So be sure you think it's fun to make all of this work up till that point where it actually begins to look like a tree. I have often said that the Japanese black pine is not for the northern European climate, but this have changed due to the climate change of the later years. And as you can see, they are now growing strongly because the intensity of the season is higher. They get more sun and they get more heat. Fifteen years ago, I would never say that it would be fine to have a Japanese black pine in colder areas like this. Okay, we are here and now it's time to add some wires and the wires I use for most conifers is copper wire because it is stiffer, it is holds better and it will stay in position better than the softer aluminium wire and Japanese black pines and conifers trees in general cope with the stiffer wire here that is a little rougher to the back but they have a stronger skin so they can manage it. The first thing I want to do is to place that lower important branch here 
to set the main direction of this and then afterwards I begin to select if I have to shorten some of this growth or I have or I want to keep it longer to fill in spaces or shorten it up and make it more compact. It's a good idea to wait cutting too much until the first branches are set, the first main branches are set because that changes the image of the tree and a long branch that would be obvious to cut off in the start maybe will be of great benefit later to put in another position therefore it's a good idea not to remove too much in the early stage this dropping branch here is fine as it is i'll not change it uh, it sits very well according to the movement of the tree so I will concentrate on the outer branches here, bring them a little down and fan them out. And then we can begin to adjust the rest of the branches according to this. I start with the wire underneath the branch so it is hidden as much as possible. When I take it out to the branch that I expect to be the branch that will go out at the tip here and still I can remove a little of the needles where I have not cleaned enough then select one of the bots I'm not going too hard on it because it's a really soft edge here I connect the wire so the opposite side and going the other way around so clockwise at one and anti-clockwise at the other because then when the branch is bent in position it will simply tighten up and sit instead of being loose and sloppy and the wire will be of no use. And I support all the time with my fingers so I do not cross anything and try to get the wire in between the needle pairs. Then I can put this in position, bend it a little down and being sure that the tips point a little upwards. So this will be a little further down because it's in the front. And the next one here will stay a little above and this way it is fanned out evenly here so there's enough light reaching all of the branches i shift to a thinner wire for the small smaller pieces out here i let this wire follow the thicker wire so it is supported by this I let it go to the end in between the needles and move the tip a little upwards because that will strengthen the growth and it will look natural carefully I put it on that small and still very soft little piece of growth here and tipping the tip up to reach the light and this way strengthen up because as earlier mentioned because it's at hill dominant it's important important that the tips points upwards therefore also this one will get a wire so it will be supported growing upwards you can deliberately if you have a piece of very strong growth yeah i put it in underneath that one to fasten it, making a little loop. If you want to weaken a branch, you can deliberately let it point a little bit more downwards so the growth is weakened if it is a very strong growing branch. So instead of pruning it off, it can be weakened by pointing downwards. So that's a little helpful trick if needed. So it doesn't 
conquer out weaker growth from the inside. That can be a suggestion, but here the growth is more or less evenly strong. And I will not touch the inner parts here, I will just let them grow freely. That will also help them strengthening up. Then I will add wire to this piece to fan that out better. There are a little bit too much growth here, so it have to be divided a bit. So I start with that piece. Let this wire follow out here, so it is anchored together with a thicker wire here. And let it be there. Getting this off the way carefully. And then the wire in and around as close to the base as possible for best support. And carefully out and around this piece, supporting that one. And then out underneath here. Then a wire on these. And it is not a good idea to connect these two with this with this wire, then it will just be floppy. It's not possible to support it enough. Therefore, I select one piece first and connect it to the opposite growth. Ah, I have to put it in the loop here. It's really tricky to find the way sometimes. So in here we go. Then let it follow in between here, up and around that, and connecting to a small piece over here, giving that a little direction. Then in between, it's almost like being a surgeon here. There's really not much room to work with. Up and around, spread, moving this a little. In between needles and up here. Then there's just one branch left. To finish this part. I will have to find the same way underneath that thicker piece here. Connecting it, following that loop up and around and down here, and that's it. So if you think it would be easier to wire a very large bonsai, I can trust you, it is. The devil is in the detail here. Then a final adjustment of these branches. Letting the tips pointing upwards so we strengthen them and do not weaken them unnecessarily. And maybe this will end being up too much later, but let's have it for a start. I want to put this in over here to begin to form a foliage pad. I keep more often than I would actually expecting to keep at the end, but that is both for health reasons to strengthen up that part. And if one of these small branches should die because they were wired and put in position, then we have some spare kept to strengthen it all up later and we have some spare parts to fill in the room. So 
So this is how it looked when we take a look at it. Remember a little above, everything spread out more or less evenly to fill in spaces. The first branch is in position and this is the starting point for the rest of the style. And next thing is lowering some of the larger branches here to see where they should be placed. We get a little bit more form in the tree because right now it's just growing upwards being a hat. You need to lower everything to have that feeling of dropping branches on an old tree. In this case I will use a thicker wire to be able to get force enough on those branches. I find a branch at the back over here where I can connect the wire. It's a really good idea to have in mind that you should connect it on branches that are a little further away than expected because if you do it in here everything will be too narrow it will not hold the position and it will clutter up a lot of wire at the same time So I'm attaching it to this branch and connecting it to a back branch over here. And black pine branches are a little stiffer than uh, the well-known Scots pine in Europe and also stiffer than the softer growing Japanese red pine. Here I have a spare part I can use somewhere else. There's a little needle coming in between here off it goes. So down as close as possible to the offspring, up and around. I try to move it a little when I'm wiring it, but the thing is with these stiff branches it's a little bit more difficult to move them in position at the same time as they are wired. So some of this have to be bent when the wire has ended. So I push it a little down. As, as you can see, I give it a little twist, but not too much, just a little to get it in a better angle. And this way I can avoid putting wire on those dropping branches because I twisted them a little in position. I can only do that five to ten degrees and not so much more. Then I turn over here and bend this branch as much down as I can to fill in the space down here. Without disturbing the inner part here which is the interesting part we want to see, but to connect and make a better compact image. Looking from the top and a little from the side, the branch here have been fanned out. The first branch at the top is lowered and the next I will do is begin to position foliage and branches following that dropping branch here. Often I talk about keeping the wire on the roll not to waste too much wire, but in this case I take pieces off and hope that I will not waste too much wire because trying to get that end 
of the wire in beside the branches with a heavy roll at the other end might cause more damage than good. Therefore I break that principle in this case. I connect to a branch up here already wired giving a little more strength having a double wire here and then letting the wire connect to a smaller branch and then this can be put in position. The good thing about copper wire is that even though the wire isn't connected properly to the other branch over here that copper wire is so stiff that it holds anyway. And there really isn't much room because there are a lot of branches but I want to keep as many of them as possible both for the health of the tree but also to have more to work with and put in position. Here it's not possible to bend that tip of the branch so much up so it will be weakened a little but we are at the top part of the tree so this part is stronger and will cope with having the branch bending a little bit downwards more than I normally would prefer. When we take a look at the full design here I want all the movement to move in this direction to the left. It's not necessary to have a lot of force in the back to make so uh, support that image it will not feel like it is tipping because the roots here are anchoring the tree securely in the ground therefore it's enough just to have a little foliage and branches over here to keep the balance and else let it all flow in this direction that's why I will now bring the back branches here that were placed not by me but originally in this position I want to change that to follow the flow there is a branch a little in the way here, but first the branch I wired over here, I will move from that space into the front. I will keep this one below and then carefully bend that branch in position and support it with my thumb all the way and I'm careful not to do it in just one big rush. The great thing about Japanese black pines and pines in general is that they tolerate this kind of bending because they are soft. So now it's in position so let's turn the tree and check from the front what corrections needs and this one might go with it and a little lower or it will be cut off. Just let me remind you, this is the back of the tree. Then we turn it to the front and we can see how the flow is going in this direction. And it is possible to see a little of that branch behind here filling in the space. And then it is important to keep distances between the layers of foliage when they develop. So we get some negative spaces where bird can be imagined to fly in and sit or maybe even build a little nest. Next thing I will do is continue on the back side, lowering a branch here, bring it in to give more flow here. Maybe that branch will go later on, but it's always a good idea to have a little too many branches. Branches that I specifically name as security branches because if another branch die, there is something else to take over. Daisy is... <laughs> That's okay, Daisy. No cuddling at the moment. I am at work. One circle around here. And then finding a place to anchor this one. And here it begins to be very difficult to find anywhere to attach wires without breaking these fragile branches. 
I think I got away with that one without ruining anything. And maybe you would ask, couldn't you use aluminium wires in this case? I certainly could, but now on with it with the copper wire and it simply holds better and it's easier to bring or force some more severe bending with copper wire because it is stronger. And this little one will be in the way when I bend in this direction. Therefore I have to go instead of being squeezed inside here. A little down and in and fill the space and move a little towards the back so we fill in some space here. So when we look at it from above it's going in this direction and being about maybe two thirds when we end the design someday at the back and one third in the front that adds a feeling of more depth. Then we can go to the front and at the front I will arrange these branches before I lower the top. And now we can change to a thinner wire that will be able to hold these branches in place. I'm always trying to figure out where I have a wire already placed, a thicker wire, that's the reason why it's a good idea to wire with the thickest wire first and set the main branch because then the thinner wire can follow the line of the thicker wires without overlapping. And the reason I wired out to the end is because I want to be able to point that tip a little upwards. And I will add a wire to the partner here. So once again, follow the line of the other wires. So they do not cross. This makes them hold better and it simply also looks nicer. And attaching it. over here at a small piece and this can be used to direct this upwards a little and we're just talking about a piece of this length so we're really working in the detail here fanning the branches out Letting the tip point a little upwards so it can grow strongly. And take a little piece out here and then being sure that all of the tips and the ends here receive some light and therefore they have to be fanned out. And at the same time it forms that little round shape here. I need to give this a little while as it will position itself underneath here and weaken. So also here, I will put a little wire. And there's always a danger when we style a tree for the very first time that it will end up with being a metal tree with too much wire so take care of not necessarily wire every little branch unless it makes sense so now i can push into this and correct this a little and then we have 
a nice fanning foliage pads, but also in different layers when we look at it horizontally. So this is the back side we have arranged. Now I will arrange some of the back branches here, seen from the front, so we add some balance and finishing off with the top. Now all of this is very detailed work. And even on the very also at the very small branches, it is important that the wire sit tight, but never dragged hard into the softwood because that will harm the branches. But it has to sit tight if it should have any effect and hold the branch in place. Finding a way to attach this one down here, getting a needle up, up and out, and then down and in and underneath and out to the tip, lowering the branch at the inside, making a curve, and then moving the tip just slightly upwards to strengthen it and filling in that space. And this was a branch I was not sure if I would end up keeping any of these because they were sticking up out of the silhouette but after placing all of the other branches they came, came in handy here at the end. That's why it's a good idea not to cut off too much too early. I'm attaching that to another branch at the back, which I will also lower to fill in and bring depth to the back side of the tree. Something that is often forgotten and then we end up with a flat image. That's in position there. This one covers this area. I give it a little zigzag bend, so I can see it curves a little, and that will help shortening the branch instead of being straight. And a, a needle or two will break in such an operation. It's almost impossible not to do it, but so far I have not lost any bots dropping down at the inside and pointing upwards at the end. Then there's only these to arrange. It becomes more and more difficult to find anywhere to attach the wire here. And I let this branch disappear below here because the new growth is appearing up here and this will extend and then it will fill out nicely that area up here. So now it's only this one and this one we have to set in place. I don't need to wind that little one because when I move the other branch here this is help in position when twisting it just a little bit and turn away from that one then we can place two branches only wiring one. I will make use of the movement it have already and follow the, the left turn it does by itself instead of forcing it in 
the opposite direction, which will weaken it more. But again, it is a top branch, so it will be stronger than lower branches pointing downwards. But here we can place that as the center bud and make at this time a really nice curving top here. Then some final adjustments. There are a little bit too much going on here and I have that branch here with those long needles. I decided to remove that and let some of the smaller branches in here take over instead. And I can do that by simply moving the main branch there. And if you have some of those really long needles and they are too annoying without cutting too much, you can trim the ends here so we get a more neat appearance and at the same time leveling up the strengths of the parts. So a little cleaning up here at the end. A growth sticking below the foliage pads removed will make a cleaner look. And what is obviously too long and sticky, we can just shorten it without doing a lot of harm, but keep enough foliage so it's evenly distributed so we do not have thin sparse parts and very heavy parts at other places. These ends, these tips will turn a little brown at the end. That's the price to pay when we make these adjustments. So up towards an exhibition and that's in a long time future ahead. We will not do these kinds of operations or else they have to be done just in the last minute when setting the trees up. So, do not, so they do not turn brown in between at the exhibition. This is the final result. Let's clean up the table and surface a bit here. And this is how it is after this first initial styling. And you can always sit and look at it and make a few small adjustments for the future. The next days is a really good idea to check if everything is all right. Rearrange it if you have pushed something out of order or just missed something. Or There's always one or two corrections here. But Generally, I think it is a nice image following the flow up here. There is sp open spaces in between when all of these small new pots begins to grow and mature. It will fill in a little more, but it's important to keep it really compact so it is in harmony with the size of the trunk. So this will be seen from this side and you can see how the branches over here fills them. This is the back of the tree having enough branches and needles to make a convincing depth when seen from the front over here. Then we have some branches that have to elongate just a little bit but stop in this length just filling up in the top. So this is the job for today and let's take a look at it from above. There we can see how all the branches are distributed around here. The top part here will be stronger than the lower part, therefore it's important to prune this more. Be careful that it not takes over from the lower part that will be slower in its development. Therefore the balance between those parts are important. This is the finished tree for now of course. This was the first initial styling and uh, the job to do in the future the, for the next season is 
watering it well, adding some good strong nitrogen heavy fertilizer to add some movement into the foliage, giving it some strength and add some new uh, strong buds because the buds here are the weaker buds sitting in between here needs to be strengthened up. This will also mean that the needles will be too long for the next season when it begins to grow uh, because adding a lot of nitrogen and a lot of fertilizer and a good watering will extend the foliage more than we actually want. But at this stage it has been weakened a little simply because of the styling reposition of the positioning of the branches so it will be not be that much. Later in the development stage when it begins to mature after two or three seasons when the wire is removed and it will take two or three seasons before the wire can be removed because the growth will be slow after wiring it you know, this season because that slows everything down. Then we can begin to look into adding less fertilizer and control the watering more and the repotting so it will slows down the growth and set shorter, more compact uh, new candles and shorter needles and also beginning to decandle it during summer, but that is a task for later. Now it just have to grow. The pot is begin uh, the pot is now beginning to be filled up with roots, but I will let it stay in the pot for this season. Repotting it in the same season as it has been styled is really risky. It will set it hard back and it might even kill it. So the next season it will just stay in the pot, although the roots are filling the pot up. And then if it grows well, the next season I'll begin to look into a repotting. If that is not the case, if the tree is not growing strongly during this season and it is still a problem that the roots fills in this pot too much, I will lift the tree from the pot finding a little bit larger pot, just touching uh, and removing some of the outer soil and then let it stay in that extra big pot for one or two years to strengthen up fully. But that is a matter to decide after one season of growth and see how well it will be growing. Thank you for watching this session.